In this video, I'm going to go through how I use Obsidian on a day-to-day -day basis, how I use it for PDFs, for videos, blogs, everything, and just go through how I use Obsidian for my note-taking because it shouldn't be difficult to do any sort of note-taking, especially with the amount of tools we have nowadays. This is my first page. This is my journal page, a journal page. It's the daily notes page that comes up in Obsidian. It happens in every app, so just because I'm talking about Obsidian doesn't mean you can't do it to any other app out there. This could just be a normal word processor. The reason I have these in different brackets is because they are links to pages. They are basically hyperlinks to pages. If I go into the preview mode, you can see last edited. That is just saying when I last edited the page, then I can jump through very quickly, go backwards and forwards in time, going to whatever date it is, and then I can jump back to today's date, which is the 28th of October. Yeah, so this is a note that I actually took last night on my phone. I was I couldn't get to sleep, so I took a note on my phone. Obsidian works on my phone, so I just wrote that thing down, and that's what I use this page for. It is basically a whiteboard, a scratch pad for anything. Any note I need to take goes on my daily notes page it just it just goes there and then at the end of the day I can sort it out afterwards and work out what I actually want to do with it then you can see in the side we have my folders my folder structure is extremely basic I've got my journal folder I then have the year so 2021 when it's 2022 believe it or not there'll be a 2022 uh, we've got an audio journal because I audio journal every day so if we go backwards in this day you can see oh I haven't done it recently because I've been ill uh, you can see here is uh, an audio journal and this audio journal is a file it's just an mp3 file and they are saved all in this folder uh, then we have my hidden folder, which I'm not going to show you because it's hidden. Then we have October, so the active month. It's October, so it's October. Uh, and then we have the day, so after today, I will drag this into October. When October is done, I will drag October all the way into months. And then there's the rest of the months of the year. And then I've got weekly reviews. Now, weekly reviews is basically all of my different weekly recaps. So you can see 2021, week 43, week 42, 41, etc., etc. And they are my weekly recaps. And then I have the, the recap basically summary because I do all of my weekly recaps so all of the notes that I've taken I, I I capture them and I put them into a podcast so my podcast is my weekly recap that is my journal folder that is the extent of it do I go in there no I just drag the day to the month when I need to the main section of my obsidian vault is my notes section and my notes are split into three different types of notes I call it a capture note because it's it's what I'm doing is I'm capturing something and in my capture notes there are lots of different types there's articles blogs images blah 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 really complicated stuff but basically if it's from Instagram it goes to my Instagram folder if it's a YouTube video it goes to my YouTube folder but these are capture notes and these capture notes can be extremely small from just a tweet so if I come into here online education thread that is a thread from uh, this person that that's a thread from Twitter that's the link back to it and this template is the same template for every single capture note you will see you've got the the name of the note so online education thread online education thread the reason that's up is so I can bring it up a second time or third time and multiple times when I'm working inside the notes because sometimes I want to have them in different pages because some of the notes are massive because they're papers. Then we have a podcast. So let's go to this podcast. See, it's a little bit of a, a longer note. Uh, and then if we go to papers, we go to this one. This one is a paper. So it's an academic paper, a little bit different up here, but very similar. So we've still got the name of the note. We've then got the time it was created, the same thing. Published date is specific to papers because I want to know when the paper was published. Then I've got the the author or authors so these are the authors that came in then I've got a link so that's the link to the PubMed link online so if people do find this capture note in my obsidian publish they can go find it because uh, not all PDFs are available and then I have my PDF which is stored in my obsidian vault there so if we come backwards here for a little bit you can see there's the PDF folder that is where all of my PDFs are stored so if I go into there we've got others so not all of my PDFs are articles but I mean four of them aren't the other 100 and however many 185 are Yes, yeah, so all of my PDFs are there. I can search for my PDFs inside of Obsidian, which have been edited, uh, or I could search for PDFs that haven't been edited that are also in Obsidian because of Zotero, but we're not going through Zotero today. Then we have processing notes. So this here is a paper capture note. The same with all the other notes that I've just gone through. They are capture notes. So they are just, this is a point, this is a point, this is another point. But once I've captured those notes, they will be here. They're just outside of my folder. So if I close this one out, you see we've still got three capture notes here that I still need to go through. So they are formatted the same. They look very, very similar, but they don't have any links. Where in here, you can see there's loads of different other links in here. And what this has basically done is I've moved some of these points. So some of these paragraphs I've moved into processing notes. What is a processing note? A processing note is a list of other points. So if I come into my processing note, long-term athlete development, this is just one note. 
this this is one note, but this is a point from a note. This is this is one I've literally just made. Here's another one. So this is a point. This is a point. These points are all from this capture note. So this is like a reference. What this is, is just a reference back to where I found the thing. So if I go to youth strength and conditioning, you can see we've got even more now. So we've got youth strength and uh, youth development as a note inside this processing note. So youth strength and conditioning is a processing note because there are lots of points in here. See, there's lots of different points down here that could be summarized in words, summarized in other notes, or summarized in another way. Uh, but they're not actually condensed into words or sentences. You wouldn't be able to read this and understand what's going on. You'd need to have some background understanding. But there are still notes to other places. So training load. What is training load? Differences in maturation. This is a working note, which is inside a processing note. So the way I categorize them is you have a capture note. This is the thing that I've taken. And then I have a processing note and a working note. Processing and working basically go backwards and forwards. So if I've finished working with a note, then it's working. So if there's no point I need to summarize or go through, then it's a working note. So when I look at differences of maturation, you can see there is a line. These are all the references. So this is a UK coaching video. This is a podcast. This is another podcast. They are three cap capture notes inside the footnotes of a working note. This being the working note because you can see we've got very simple three lines. That's the working note. Then if I go into early individuals, uh, early maturing individuals, this is another working note, another working note, etc, etc. But this is linked into this note which is a massive processing note. We go skill acquisition. This is another processing note, and we can go down. There are there are loads of other processing notes. And what I will say is, when I add something to a working note, it then gets relegated back to a processing note. So I will try and find one, and I'll come back to you. Here we go. So I've just found our personality. That's the name of the note, our personality, and it was a working note. You can see I've got sentences. I've got a couple of sentences with other notes in here. And I've got a I've got a reference in here as well. This is a reference from Tom Bilio. There you go. That's a capture note reference. But I also found this point, and this point is from the 24th of the 8th. This is the sports like show. This is a point, one point that came from this capture note. So if I if I open up this note, you can see it's it's a it's a fairly long note with podcasts, but some of these points I thought, you know what? That relates to that personality page. So our personality is a processing page now because I added this point. So I've, I've added a divider. If I go into here, I've added a divider. I've added the point from the capture note. So this is the capture note. I've added the point from the capture note into here. So it's now become a processing note rather than a working note because I need to process. I need to know what these actual words mean. Am I just going to use it as a reference? Am I going to add something to it? What is the point of it being there? What this allows me to do then is when I come into my main page. So this is my main starting page, my start here page. These are all working notes. You can see down here, all of these orange dots are working notes. These blue dots are processing notes. So all of these are working notes that I'm using to remember things. Basically, it's a book. It's an ever a never-ending book, a Wikipedia book of my own notes from working notes and processing notes. And as I add things in, as I change things up, they all come back to here. So if I go into learning, if I open up my learning section, I can come into here and see long-term long -term memory. That's what long-term memory is. And I can go down and have a look at whatever whatever these things might be. And I can have a look through. And that's pretty much all of my notes. There is a capture note that I capture all the information from, whether that's a podcast, a video, wherever. Then it goes into a processing note. So it's something I need to work on. It's something that I'm processing. I need to understand what's going on, get a, a feel, an understanding, a an exploration of something somewhere and then once I've condensed it into a summary note it turns into a working note so I know I've worked on it I've thought about it and it's there I've got a summary point for it and then if something else comes up I add something to that working note it becomes a processing note and I can work on it again and that is what all of these notes down here are these are starred notes so these are all processing notes if I click on them you can see there's there's different points that need to be uh, gone through basically they're very small points but they are points I need to go through 
to work on. So they're processing notes that I'm working on so I can get through them and then work on something else. This exploration page is where all of those points from the daily notes go. So any notes that I have during the day, any notes that I grabbed during the day, any ideas, any thoughts, anything I want to explore goes into my exploration page. And the reason it comes into here is because it means I have a, a one shop, a one place to find all of the questions that I have. So you can see I've got working on and new things. So these are the the two at the top, these are things that I'm working on, I'm working on video script, project, PhD, etc. Uh, but then I have other topics, other areas, and whenever I'm looking at something, I can then ask those questions, and those questions get put into those sections for when I may want to explore it later on in the future. So maybe in a year's time, I come back to something uh, about behavior, and I want to know that question. Oh, that was a question I already had, let's go have a look at what I already know about this thing, and then carry on exploring from there, but I won't know. So I, I store the questions in there in case I want to explore them, but it doesn't mean I'm going to because we can't answer all the questions ever. The best way to go through my notes and understand how all my notes work and what I've actually written in my notes is just to go through my Obsidian Publish, which is free online. You can just browse around just like you would in a website. The only difference is uh, you won't see the templates, which you can see are here. You won't see those and you won't see the PDFs either because uh, there are just way too many PDFs that uh, some of them you can't see. So uh, all of the capture notes that have a link to the PDF uh, will be still available in my capture notes. So go have a look around and explore.